This is the Running Channel podcast with me, Sarah Hartley, Rick Kelsey, who we've let off pressing buttons this week, Thank Andy God. Badley, who desperately needs this episode. Yes, because you're forcing me to run a marathon finally. <laughs> yes, I am. And very excitingly, later on, we're going to be joined by expert marathoner and Puma athlete Rose Harvey, because this week we are talking about everything you need to know in order to run a marathon live from our Puma Run Club. Woo! Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. You two smell a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is why we should rehearse this bit. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we've we've just been on a run. Yeah. So you're keeping time for the podcast today. That's the first time you're going to be pressing your stopwatch tonight because you didn't bother joining us on the run out there, did you? Listen, I've oh. been 7K already. Let's do a podcast. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, we should catch up on our running for this week. So what have you been up to, Sarah? Well, I was going to say, surely we should let Rick brag about his 7K run to start off with. Okay, it's been really hot recently. <laughs> um, and, you know, I knew that I had to get out because I've got a race coming up. And have you? Yeah, you I've haven't got, mentioned it I've got a race all. coming up, apparently. Yeah, big 10K. And so I, longest I one out. that you've done since the surgery. Yeah, 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 longest one since surgery. So this afternoon I went out 7K at 1pm. Well, that's, ter- that was terrible stupid, yeah. decision. Not good. 30 degrees today. How was it? Nice and, nice and cool, mate. Absolutely miserable. Well, you've practiced starting at 1 p.m., so you are ready. For so I'm energy. ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I got an incredible Sorry. selfie through from you this afternoon. Yeah. You said, I think you described yourself as a tomato. It was a beautiful topless selfie. So yeah, maybe yeah. we'll put that one on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I got that one too. I mean, just don't go out when it's that hot. It was a bit cooler tonight for you two, though. Yeah, well, so we've just knocked out 5K, some drills and, some, and a few strides. Yeah, yeah. You missed uh, when we got back after the run. Andy was like, oh, sorry, don't look too good. <laughs> and then we sat down to do the podcast and he literally said, wow, you look better. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I think actually I said was, how did you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> I eat my face. How did I fix my face? I would, I looked the equivalent of, you know, when you wax a car <laughs> and, and all the drops try. How did and, you fix it? I just <laughs> Just pat myself. Oh, right, okay, okay. You can probably see how yeah. I fixed it on it my just top. Is shammy. Yeah, how's uh, marathon training going, Andy? Actually, really good. I mean, relatively speaking. Mm. So I did my longest run in, in a long time on Sunday. I got out early, so it wasn't too hot. 16K. I got a lot of, a lot of stick on Strava because I ran exactly 16K, which is then 9.9 something miles. Right. Um, and people thought I was messing with them by, because I guess it depends on what your Strava set to as to how you see the final distance. Uh, so I thought yeah. I'd done a nice round distance, but I got a fair bit of stick for that. But yeah, I was really pleased. Nice. That's almost halfway to a marathon. It's not, is it though? <laughs> half, it's half, not. and then. Well, I was just trying again. to make you feel better. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of a quarter, almost. but yeah. You don't look that concerned, though, mate. I've got to say. <laughs> I hide it well. Oh, I, I am really. Are nervous. you generally concerned? Um, I'm nervous about covering mm. the distance, so I'm finding, uh, like, I'm enjoying the challenge, and now I have a structure to my week. Because for ages I was a little bit aimless with my running, so I was kind of running just because I wanted to stay fit. And I, and I'll, genuinely, my main aim in running was that my kids would never say really could you you used to be a runner (laughs) (laughs) Um, have they said that to you yeah no they haven't they (laughs) haven't so i haven't ever let it get to that point but that's that's my motivation to still be out there doing it and then now having structure so i'm running three sometimes four times a week plus two gym sessions and actually somehow i found that i've found i have more time in my week even though i'm doing more running because i'm building stuff around it so um that's a top tip i guess like the aimlessness was actually more time sapping than having a more rigid structure yeah Bit of routine. Well, yes. that segues us quite nicely onto today. We're talking about everything you need to know about running a marathon. Yes, this I'm is going to be quite a this. quiet episode from Andy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be soaking it all up, asking lots of questions. We've got questions that people have sent in as well, and obviously questions from our lovely audience in front of us. Yeah, it is so. a nice place to be. In fact, the whole ambiance of this place is really nice. You know, sometimes you walk into a store and it's either too quiet. You know, the music's a bit Billie Eilish. What's it called? <laughs> uh, you know, RAC. Uh, D- I'm D- really sad that no, I know on, what on, I'm now on, on a Rick wavelength and DSS, I know you mean DSS. ASMR. ASMR, yeah. <laughs> or it's too loud and it's absolutely banging music. But this is a good vibe, this store. It's because it's, cause <laughs> yeah, it's all you know set up we've, for us. we've asked them to turn it off. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also I've I've been able to sit in here for the last hour while you two have been running, so I've actually got yeah, to Yeah, I mean you've well. set it up very nicely. Thank you've got a lovely you. selection of well yeah, 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 Puma shoes behind us. Well I think we should stop waffling on and now we should welcome to the podcast. The incredible Puma athlete, Rose Harvey, fresh off, uh, second place finish and a big PB at the big half at the weekend. And of course, Rose is also a 227 marathon runner. So welcome, Rose. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) 
Thanks. Wow, Thanks. what a welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How Do you normally get that when you come into the store? Oh, I know. Anyone would have thought they'd been told to clap. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Don't give the secrets away. <laughs> yeah, so how are you feeling? It's been, we're recording this on a Wednesday, so a few days after the big half. How are the legs? I have to say, today they're a bit better, but I've been through a real roller coaster of leg pain since the big half. Monday, <laughs> really optimistic about it. Went out and did nine and a half miles. Oh, wow. And yeah, felt so great. So it's literally the next day? The next day, yeah. yeah. Um then Tuesday was horrendous. So yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like the big the big half course, there are a lot of corners, a lot of cobblestones, and it was hot. So those mm. are the three facts I'm bl- blaming for having pretty sore legs. Well, I think just running a half marathon a really fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I ran a PB, that, yeah. That'll probably do it. <laughs> tells how fast, Rose tells it. What was it? 70 minutes, great. Two seconds, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said to me earlier. Those two seconds. You said to me earlier, actually weirdly would have been happier with a worse time that was for like 70 15 or something where it wasn't just that that two seconds i would have been less frustrated mm. yeah but yeah i have to be it's an incredibly about incredibly it. fast time yeah. and it puts my i was really pleased with my long run at the weekend the 16k which is much less than a half marathon and i think it took me about the same amount of time so <laughs> so you run a whole extra 5k it's nice to know as well though that in the elite world you get annoyed about that kind of thing as well because there's me yeah. thinking like you came second that's incredible like so good but it's nice to know that I had a similar thing where I finished Berlin Marathon stopped my watch and it said 4.00001 one second mm. that's oh. not how time works and then Strava rounds it up and then yeah, <laughs> Strava <laughs> rounds it up as well and I was like no and then I waited for the chip time and didn't realize you could check it straight away and it was literally 3.59.58 so I was so ha- glad that I started oh, my watch really? early yeah yeah you always lose a few seconds, don't you, on your own watch? Yeah, yeah. there's too much well, going on. Well, yeah, you, you're weaving a little bit as well. And like it's, um, I know that Mo's here today, having run his um, sub three hour marathon earlier in the year. But his watch ticked over to marathon distance way, I think, really depressingly for him, way before the finish, <laughs> probably like 500 meters to a K. And then there was a mad panic for him to try and get to the finish in under three hours because he thought it was doing it, it comfortably. So, yeah, that's, I guess, something to take into account and pay attention to the actual K or mile yeah. markers, not the. Um, not what your watch says the whole way. So yeah. Rose, do you generally run a little bit more than the race distance? Yes, normally. Although in in the when you're running in the elite, you're obviously you don't have the crowd, so there's not Rose isn't weaving. She's, she's at the front, front Rick. She's yeah. not getting yeah. around right. people. Good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as much we really. <laughs> Oh, I think we need to explain that now. The laugh's going to make no sense on the podcast. So, oh, so, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, this is the second I time we did and that. It's well. so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, seamless. Well, you were seamless, and also Rick corrected himself to make him sound smarter, but itself sound smarter. Hey. Like, oh, yeah, yeah you, you must did. definitely run <laughs> further when you uh, were <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you, when you at the front. Hey, yeah. the bonus, bonuses of second time round. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, I think we should get into marathons. This is yeah. as broad as we can possibly make it we're going to try and cover off everything to do as marathon as much to do with marathons as we possibly can starting off with training Andy do you have any is there anything in marathon training that's confusing you at the moment everything right everything. good um, specific well I said that that actually the structure of the week has helped me but I'm running a lot less than you so I guess like the I'd love to know how many times you're running a week on average not that I'm going to try and copy it um, I don't like, want to scare you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have a good idea about your own marathon. But I, so I run every day. I have one day off every two weeks. Okay, that's very generous of the. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I some days I run. I'd say three to four days. I run twice. Yeah, a, twice a day. Wow. Yeah. So I'm doing about ninety-five to hundred miles, which actually shockingly it's not for, that high for marathon, is it? Yeah, it's not that high from yeah. from marathon runner and. I find it mind blowing because I feel like that's a lot. Yeah. A to run, but B to fit into the day. Yeah. And you know, yeah, by the time you get back, you're already heading out the it's door lunchtime. again. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, well, I've got to run again and fit in another hour run in the evening. So, but yeah, I think because I don't have such a long background in running, yeah. I've had to kind of build up my my yeah. volume quite slowly. So that's why I run slightly less than other. Some other marathon runners. Yeah. Mm. So of your training, I find the long run, and my long run's not that long yet, but it is getting, that's the thing I'm most scared of. It's the most daunting. And it's probably the thing that takes me the longest to get out the door for, for that reason. If I'm going out for an easy run that's going to take me half an hour, 
I, I mm. can pull, pull on my shoes and get out. When I know I'm going to be out there for a lot longer, it's sort of, I put it off. I guess, do, do you ever get that? Like as, as, as when it's your job now? Or, or do you have a way of like getting over that? Like just getting I out the door? I have to say I'm the other way around. It's the easy runs I struggle to get out the really? door for. I love a long run. Oh. And I think it's because it's, it's a big workout. I love the sessions. Yeah. And... I, I guess get you have to prep up more. For them. Yeah, because yeah, you prep. I do that as well, where I'm like, oh, easy run, I'll fit that in at some point. Exactly. And then it gets to it and, and you're like, procrastinate. Ugh. Yeah. Really? Whereas a session, I know my timings. I know I'm heading out the door and I do normally do them with people. Uh, so you're so sort of, that's the key, right? You're going to meet someone. Yeah. yeah. But even, to be honest, even when, I'm, even when I'm not running with someone or doing my long run with someone, I do have a set time that I need to be out of the door. And because it takes a big chunk of the day, I'm very strict on it because I normally have something afterwards yeah but I'm, i was just thinking about that day off like how excited you've you got get to the day off <laughs> that, that day off like, what, what, what do you do like big night out with the girls in the town two you know you've got two weeks to get over it you're trying to trying to work out how I wine fits into the story isn't it? <laughs> well, no. Two, yeah, well, no more no more going out for another two weeks what do you do on your day off <laughs> it's a good question i actually you know what i feel worse on my really? day off yeah. yeah i feel a lot worse sometimes i sneak in a little extra activity on my day off i'm that sad <laughs> see rick well, every other day that. is a day yeah. off yeah, yeah. he's just, in the hot know, tub drinking wine yeah. having the time of his life i love a hot tub but oh if you have no i'd love one. Oh right i was gonna say be hot yeah. tub buddies but that <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. you've just, you've just made really it quickly. so weird yeah so anyway andy yeah um on the training front the the long run i'm gonna hammer this because i think i do think that a lot of people are training for whatever event it might be 10k half marathon they still do a long run relative yeah. to their race distance so do you just go out and run or is your long run structured in a way where you're doing like different things at different paces or does it kind of does it vary i guess how do you mix up those long runs i alternate weeks yeah. so i do a long run every week but one week one will be some normally marathon pace in there yeah and so it'll be structured it still normally ends up being around like 24 miles so it's a pretty pretty long oh, wow. session yeah. but oh, that's a basically a marathon it. That's the yeah. perils of being elite, well, isn't it? Because you yeah. go so fast, it's actually not so much time on your feet. And whereas... the sessions, they go so quickly. You don't realise mm. you're doing that distance. Whereas the my <laughs> other week is... So this Sunday... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you now, if I went out and did that, I would realise. <laughs> <laughs> and I would realise casual... about two miles in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But my So my run this Sunday is two hours 45, and I'll probably go like a little over a marathon. Oh. But that's just running and that feels longer. That, I mean, it is longer, but it feels a lot longer. Yeah, because it's less structured. Like I've definitely it's found- It's just running. Yeah, just run, just run. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> keep I, running, I, keep again, going. They're, they're not as long, but I've found the runs that I've done where they're, all of a sudden I've covered 10, maybe 15, 16K by doing them in blocks of two or 3K warm up, and then like yeah. alternating K is not particularly fast, but just enough. And then all of a sudden I've ticked off mm. a whole bunch of distance and I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Exactly. As opposed to just dreading it and thinking about the slog of doing it all at the same pace. I think it's the mentally, mentally being able to break it down and you only ever think about the next rep. So if your next rep is only, you know, three, four K, well, it's a lot easier than thinking, oh, I've got 16 to do. Yeah, wow. Do I you mean, always plan it? Do you always plan it that your route where you're gonna go or do you just kind of just run, keep going south? <laughs> well, I if it's Sarah, you just keep going down. Or, well, I normally just do, I'm either in down. Battersea yeah. or Bushy Park, so it's a lot of laps. Oh, uh, okay. I don't really. Yeah. Just, oh, have you I'm ever got a uh, Strava crown for like most laps of the route that you do? Oh, yeah, the, the local know. legend. Local legend, sorry, yeah. yeah, that one. I mean, I could well do in Battersea. <laughs> I've done a lot of laps of Battersea. Right, now this is a question. So Battersea Park is a, like a nice concrete loop that you can go around. Mm. Is there a right way and a wrong way to run round when it's a loop? This is a big, this is a big debate. <laughs> well, and every, every, it's quite a niche debate. Well, sorry, I also live quite close to Battersea okay. Park. And every yeah. time I enter the park, I stand there for a few minutes and, and wait for a runner to go past and then run whatever way they're going. Because I, nev <laughs> I never remember. And I've done it the wrong way on a Sunday before. And then suddenly you have 50 runners running towards you. Yeah, and I have to do a subtle U-turn. Go back with the con. I think they should, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, didn't know, I didn't know there was like a right way and a wrong way, but m me and my training partner have different favourite ways. So we Ooh. actually switch it up. So it depends, you know, who, who gets I, the choice. You You're doing it the right way 50% of the time. You just don't know which <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> I do find it weird in a park 
where it's not a track running in the direction that's not the way you'd run on the track. Anti-clockwise. So, yeah, anti-clockwise yeah. would be normal. Like turning left. Yeah. I can, turn, I can yeah, only left. turn. I can oh, only turn left. Sense. I can yeah. only turn west. West. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, training. I guess uh, another key thing from a marathon running perspective is like, what do you eat and when, mm. and how careful are you with that? I know that whenever we do anything about about nutrition or or a lot of people think there's some kind of silver bullet to to run faster or to um, feel healthier. But I guess how much do you worry about food and when you eat it? I think any time around the actual run so during the run is a really big one and yes I do um I think practicing marathon fueling is so key Mm. and that is a real game changer so I definitely plan that I practice it long time in advance so basically as soon as I start the block start doing long runs I'll start practicing my fueling yeah and the same with kind of before before sessions just so you can practice what you're going to do on race day yeah because that's another one first of all like it makes a difference secondly it's the biggest cause of having a miserable day mm. <laughs> if you have stomach issues and it's the most annoying thing you could put in all the training and then to have stomach issues mess it up is just kind of un- it's avoidable and it's grim if it happens so i am very careful around fueling during and just before the session other than that i don't follow a strict diet or anything i i mean after i do big sessions i do focus on you know getting getting in some good food straight afterwards some good protein and yeah. everything but i don't yeah. yeah i don't cut anything out of my yeah, diet not, not like, obsessive about it just kind of no um, balanced that's like one yeah. of the big mistakes get some isn't good it? cake in sometimes it's yeah, yeah. like so fueling good. afterwards i think that we get so many problem with questions about you know, how do you feel properly after training? And do you think that's one of the things that people forget the most? I do, yeah. It's And it's so crucial because you always need to be thinking about your next session. So Mm. I think people do the session and they're like, oh, I've done it. Mm. And then a really common one is people, you know, go to the pub and... (laughs) (laughs) That's a Rick. That's what Rick would do. Which is very fun. And I used to do it too. But then, you know, <laughs> you go and have drinks and, like, no food. Yeah. And then you get home and you might have, like, a bit of food before you go yeah. to bed at, like, 11.30. And then your recovery is absolutely hammered. Yeah. But yeah, then I, I suppose when you go to races, though, because we got this the other week, didn't we, Sarah? Like, that someone asked us a question about recovery afterwards. And they, most people tend to drive to a race. Then they get yeah. in a car and they might be in a car for two hours. Yeah. They haven't eaten properly, yeah. but then that's poor recovery when it comes to what you're doing to your body post-race as well. It so is. W- what should you be doing? I think just take stuff with you. you yeah. know, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be, I get you, you know, it's sometimes logistically difficult to get a good meal in, but there are loads of good bars, drinks that you can have on the go, which, my approach is something is better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So sure, it might not be like the perfect recovery fuel, but if you can get in a protein shake or and get some carbs in there too. Carbs, I think people forget about getting carbs after yeah. workout exactly, and they're yeah. like, oh, get protein in, but you need the carbs to replenish your glycogen stores in your muscles, which are really depleted after you work hard. Yeah. Straight after. Straight up, as yeah. quickly as you can. Right. Yeah, my understanding is that as quickly a, as you can tolerate it. Yeah, my understanding is a, a big dip in in immune function, or can be a dip in immune function if you haven't fueled properly afterwards. So it's not just the recovery from a muscular repair wow. perspective. It's you could get ill from not eating properly. Or certainly that's the premise I worked on. And, and often, actually, when I'd been a little bit ill and then would come back to training, I wasn't running as far as Rose. But on my longer runs, that was the only time that I would ever take some kind of carbohydrate with me to have halfway through even like an hour run or or a 90 minute run which i wouldn't normally have done because i could usually run without fueling just to stop myself kind of burning myself out when i was recovering from illness wow just getting getting it in straight away afterwards. yeah and is that something that you think about when you do races as well because like like rick said i feel, feel like everyone's really diligent in training and then you like build up to race day and then everyone's like oh it took me like 10 days to recover from a marathon because and then we asked like oh what did you do after and they were like well i walked right, i got right. my medal yeah, yeah, yeah. i got in the car i drove home for five hours <laughs> yeah. and then we were like did you eat no, no. <laughs> yeah. wait until dinner like is that something that you plan out on actual race day as well like when are you able to get food after the race yeah and and that's the that's the perfect example of when i'll just take something really quick so it's not it's not a faff and you can just have 
you know, after a marathon, I'll have like a bar and a protein shake, and that will normally just kind of get me through till I can get some proper, when you need to. proper fuel yeah. in. Yeah. You want to make sure that's a good bar though, so that when you're like thinking about it in the race, you're not like, oh, I've got that for afterwards. Yeah, although. <laughs> I don't know about you, but after a marathon with all the gels, I like never want anything sweet. So it's a real chore. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, don't, 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 about, you don't ask scare me, doesn't they? No, I got no <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to find out though. Um, but let's say, like, well, that, I guess a mistake that you could make with marathon running is not fueling properly. Yeah. But one of the other questions we had for you is what mistakes should people avoid when it comes to training and racing? Like, what mistakes maybe have you made that you help other people from not making or like? do you know other people could make? So our, our big mantra is nothing new on race day, but I mm. guess, is there anything else? Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. Um, and just, I think fueling is very individual. So, you know, a lot of people ask me like, oh, what, what do I do? And of course I can say what I do, but it could be completely different for other people. So I think just experiment but experiment early enough that you can kind of find out exactly what works for you yeah. um there are so many tools you can use you know there's like gels drinks you can have caffeine in them no caffeine there are lots of different like formulas for them so the one i use morton is like a hydrogel which is quite solid yeah but some of the gels are really liquidy and it's it's to be honest it's just like personal choice so i would say Find out what works for you. Caffeine is a good one to use if you yeah. can if you can tolerate it. Sarah can't um, tolerate it. Caffeine makes her cry. Really? <laughs> it like acts too fast. So like if I'd had caffeine right now, I'd be talking at a million miles an hour and then probably halfway through the podcast, I'd just start crying. <laughs> but, like, it's not oh, an yeah. exaggeration. No I haven't heard yeah. of that side effect before. <laughs> it's just it's just too fast. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just, just acts too fast. Yeah. I'd probably yeah. like break a marathon world record and then just be in a ball like crying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'd love to be able to but use caffeine. If you had a world record, it'd be worth it. So Yeah. I mean, maybe one day I'll try it, but I'm scared. These guys keep threatening to put caffeine in. <laughs> in yeah, like, spike yeah, just spike me with a bit of caffeine before race day to see what happens. Could come. Yeah, it could happen at some point. Um, I want to talk about shoes as well, because a big question we always get asked is like, carbon plates can massively help with like running. It helps with recovery. It also helps with speed. What is your current like speed rotation? Do you train every day in carbon plates or do you kind of save it for the benefit of it i only use them for sessions so for all my easy running i run in non-carbon shoes so either the forever run which i've gotten today or the velocity too and then for my sessions it depends a bit where i am and kind of what train i'm on but if i'm on the track i normally wear the deviate elite two um in fact most of my sessions i do in the deviate elite two except i have been lucky enough to try the fast r2 which i think are coming out next year um so i've been doing a few sessions in those which are very fun nice oh, yeah. i actually ran a sneaky 5k out in monza in the fast r not the fast r2 i haven't got those yet but um <laughs> but uh, and, and uh that was that was a oh, was that on the track it was on the racetrack on the mm. f1 Grand Prix track last week what so were they like they were incredibly fast i was not <laughs> <laughs> so they, they could have gone a lot faster just with someone else's feet in them yeah. so, uh, so yeah sorry I've, I've brought the tone oh, down Rose, be, 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 before we um, go to the audience actually we've got to ask you about some of the, the low life of running so the non-glamour side haven't we Andy because we were talking about it in Budapest yeah this is ago. a question that we, we've had in from people on social media like they're interested to know like it's, it's not all that glamorous being an elite athlete but everything you see on tv it looks amazing uh i'll i'll set us off i'll set the tone rick's gonna cringe at this but uh for example oh, being, i'm so excited oh no it's not that bad being 45 minutes away from the olympic final you're about to go on the track you're in the toilet no toilet paper that, yeah that's happened to me it's amazing so yeah biggest biggest race in my life. they are with the toilet sometimes we actually for the big half we were in a primary school and we had kids <laughs> toilets Oh, wow. So <laughs> you had to like run in and hope no one walked in because they could see everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, oh, the ones so with the, the doors. The ones with the doors the door, that are halfway yeah. up the wall. And yeah. then with the yeah. sinks really yeah. low yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, see, that's a that good really insight. gets you into the zone of like, <laughs> like come on, PB, PB. <laughs> you're, sat there, you're sat there and you can just see over the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. You know, what, what is it with those? In it's the incredible. US, actually, the adult toilets, the door is at head height. I, I've, I've never got that. 
You know, Wait, the, 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 no the, privacy. The, you know how, how high they are. The, the doors. If, if we've gone off on a real tangent here. Yeah. <laughs> when the uh, when the if, you, if you've been to the, this in the in the US, their stalls just have big gaps around the outside of the doors, so they don't close against the frame. They're like they close inside the frame, and there's just gaps all the way around the door. Oh. Just so in people general, just walk, or in the running world. No, in all, about, all US toilets. That's no, like right. how they're, not in like in houses, but in yeah. like. Uh, in public restrooms. So, so Rose, yeah. you're other low lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that aren't yeah. toilet related. Non-toilet related low lights. I would, I think the Elite Hotel, which sounds so glamorous. And I have to say, the first kind of few races that I did, I loved, the, you know, I was so excited about going to the Elite Hotel. Thought it was the coolest thing ever. But you share a room with a stranger. Yeah. You get all your meals there, which is very stressful before race day because you just want to eat what you want to eat. And especially abroad, it's, you know, yeah. you could get anything. Or any uh, one, I've seen or curry any one on the menu, with. which is... Curry on a menu? Curry, really? the number for a marathon. For a marathon. Oh. Yeah. That is a risk. And then you end up in a kid's toilet. So, yeah, I think the whole, like, room sharing with the stranger, the meals is... Have yeah. you had to share with anyone yet who just does not speak the same language as you at all? Russian shot putter? That was my experience, it. yeah, yeah. I have shared with someone who, I, no names, uh, woke up a lot through the night, and that was I don't know what, Tricky. Like what they were doing, but yeah. it's, I mean, it, you kind of you know, it's really nerves disruptive. before race day, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, I had a roommate once who I did know them. I was on a team with them for a major championships, and they were just they. I woke up at three a.m. because it was really noisy. Three a.m. at a major championships, and they were skyping their girlfriend back home on oh their my laptop. Gosh. It was I a, guess though at championships, like you're not. Your race isn't necessarily the next day. Yeah, their race Whereas was done, like, but I, mine wasn't. <laughs> so. Well, you know, it's not all about you. Uh, cool. um, well, <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> was that the night before the Olympic semi final? Um, I don't know which, I can't remember yeah, which was that the night it was. I'm not going to give it away because then gate. someone could go and look up who my oh, roommate was or okay. something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you trouble. look that up? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, I don't know. Next week on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we should open up to some questions. Definitely. So normally at this point, we take questions from you, our listeners, because uh, you email in podcast at therunningchannel.com. However, today, because we've got a live audience of the Running Channel community, you guys get to get involved and actually ask the questions yourselves live. So we have no idea this week, do we? Yeah, no ho idea. hopefully we get some, well, what's some questions. Please don't be scared. Also, also, Rick will be very cross if you don't give your name and where you're from. <laughs> that, would be, that would be very useful. Um, and I think we've got a first question. Hi, Rose. Just want to ask... Oh, name, name and where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's confidential. Okay. <laughs> Olivia from London. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Rose, I want to ask you, when you're racing, like marathon, what's in your mind? Do you just focusing on, I'm going to the end goal, finishing, get PB, get the fastest, or you have various things in your mind? What's, what's coming to you miles by mile? I think I just try to be... I mean, the marathon is a real mental game and mindset is so important as much as your physical ability I just try to be quite present in it and not soak up the atmosphere you know you've done all the hard work racing is the fun bit so enjoy it like have fun with it and look around you and you know appreciate where you are and what you're doing so I do really try to try to do that obviously it gets a bit hard when it starts really hurting but <laughs> I think as well, just breaking it up. So I don't, I don't just think about the finish line because if you're at the start, that's quite a long way away. But I just, I seg segment it in my mind. So whether that's getting to the next drink station or I break it into eight mile chunks. So I just focus on that little bit and how I'm going to execute it. So whether that's, you know, focusing on my form or just following the pacer for the first bit I just really focus on kind of the process rather than like, oh, I've got to be hitting this time and exactly how far I've got to go to the actual finish line. Do you have a mantra? Chunk it. That's chunk it. That's, um, that's the podcast mantra. I actually it? do. <laughs> it's a really embarrassing one. Oh, I got the Oh, what is it? This is, this is where we got you on. Yeah, yeah come on. Come on. Oh, no. It's, 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 no, one's, no one's listening. The worst thing is I can't even think of like a non-embarrassing one on the spot. So it's smile if you want to go faster. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Isn't that 
that what they say on fairgrounds? I love it. Isn't that what they say on fairgrounds? Oh, scream if you want to get faster. Scream. Yeah. Faster. <laughs> that'll be, that'll I don't, I don't even know marathon. where it came from, but it just makes me smile and then it makes me enjoy it. And, and then you run faster. And go faster. Hey, There's something works. connected we're, we're, as well, isn't yeah. there? Of like, if you, I've heard that before of like, literally just smiling. It works. Can yeah. make it feel yeah. so much yeah. better. I often do that in parkrun, but I feel like uh, on like the, I, I had to do a tooth, two or three lap course, I can't remember. And then on the last lap, I will think of that and people must see me go from like death stare, hating life to like, <laughs> <laughs> off we go, smile away. Oh, perfect transformation. And just on the, the mental breaking it down, I think what did Paula Radcliffe used to count to 100? That was her thing. Like, I don't know how she did that for two and a bit hours, but yeah, I, think I think she was think used to keep counting hard. to 100. That's boring. I would honestly yeah. struggle yeah. to count to 100 whilst yeah. running a marathon. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think I would struggle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's next? <laughs> Um, I'm Harriet and I'm from Derbyshire. I'm mm. going to make sure the shire is really clear. Wonderful. Nice. Yeah. That's the countryside. Um, so <laughs> 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 Sorry, I really got distracted there. Um, so my first question was, so you obviously talked about how um, it's kind of hard to stay present when it does start to hurt. But at what point in the race does it start to hurt? Like, what's your race strategy? Like, would you say for like the first 10K, it's like a comfortable pace and you're not feeling pain? Or is it like it just hurts the whole way because you're going for a PB? In the marathon, it's actually normally only the last 10K, I'd say. That hurts. Yeah, that really hurts. Just cruise that 30K. I mean, the first half. (laughs) Andy, don't listen to this bit. It won't be the same for you. (laughs) (laughs) But if you're going at the right pace, you know, first half should feel pretty comfortable in a marathon. What about 10K? Noted. (laughs) For a 10K... I mean, I'm not very good at the faster stuff, so 10K actually just hurts all the way through, I think, from like... Okay. Oh, uh, fast few miles were all right. And then, and then yeah, for the, the big pinchy. half, when did that start to hurt? The big half, I would say from mile 10, the last so 5K. Last 5K, yeah. Start to hurt. But I went through, I went, kind of went through a bit of... And again, this is such a mm. mental, yeah. mental point, really. I went through a dip because I was thinking about the pain. And then I, I can't... I think I just taught myself to stop thinking about it. And then it was fine again. And it was only the last mile it really hurt. Really? So it was yeah. all mental. So you just blocked all that pain out until the last mile. I just realised I was thinking about I was thinking about how I feel. And actually, it doesn't matter how you feel because you're just going to do it anyway. <laughs> yes, amazing. I love that. Yeah. I'm Take that, note. Yeah, I'm going to try it. It will no, matter how I'm feeling. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Matter. But then I feel like I have a like devil and angel on my shoulder being like, just don't think about it. And then the other one's like, no, do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, hard. Really it's, hard. Really it's really hard. It's hard to just switch that off and just keep pushing. Yeah. yeah. You, you, just, you do want to turn the pace off right, a little bit and just have a respite. Um, yeah. And, and that's the thing that I've, what you're describing is what I had and have lost. So I, I recently have tried to run fa- fast and then it's, it's been really hard for me to, I've just like, I just don't want to. <laughs> this, just, is, just, this is what I have. So I'm like, familiar. I could. Is, yeah. I also could not. I have a question linked to this as well. Do yeah. you find that it's easier to to switch that bit off because you can pivot between like racing yourself and racing other people? Like, is there ever a moment within like marathons or halves where you're like, don't think about the pace or what's going on, like just lock eyes on keeping that person behind me a bit further away or getting closer to the person in front? Yeah, definitely. And that does really help because it. Yeah, gives you something to focus on. And, you know, things races like like the big half when it really help it really helps the women when we have men in the race, because you get kind of fast championship men and you've kind of always got someone there. Yeah. Whereas a race like London Marathon, where you have the elite women going off separately, you don't have that. And then it's really hard because you don't see anything. So it's really noticeable. Yeah, because when you ran 227 at London 2022. Where, how much of the race were you just by yourself for? The last say? 11K. Really? Just and that's so the lonely. hardest bit as well. So hard. And yeah. it's so hard to keep your pace because your legs are gone. Yeah. yeah. So you just have to... <sighs> Huge yeah. respect for doing that. I'd be yeah. like, oh, 11K. Kay. No. <laughs> 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 Probably near a tube. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's winning. She's not going to give up then. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I spot a familiar face in the crowd. It's Mo from the Running Channel. Oh, has he got a question? Yeah. Make it good, Mo, because it's the last one. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mo from the Running Channel. Wrinkles is where I'm from. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was very similar to Sarah's question. She just took it as I put my hand up, which is hilarious. But I want to ask, do you feel more motivated being the chaser or being the one being chased in a race? Oh, good question. 
I think being the chaser. When we were doing our recent, um, we did a 5K Puma video where we were pacing people to a 25 minute 5K. Yeah. And one of the things we were talking to people, oh, I was trying to talk to people as we went around is like, don't let that invisible elastic band break. I've yeah. had someone say that to me in the past. I think it's quite a powerful visual mm. kind of. Um, so you attach them with kind yeah, of yeah, arm's yeah. length. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, that's a bit different. Maybe you're not chasing them. They're starting to get away from you. And then that's your almost your opportunity to kind of be pulled along with them. And yeah, yeah. imagining that kind of uh, invisible elastic band, don't let it break, don't let it break. That's, yeah, I found that useful. Yeah, because I remember in, when Mo was running his marathon, I remember like one of your paces saying to you like, look at that person in yellow, do not drop them. And then you're just like running to catch up with them. And then as well, I would say the one caveat though, is that if you're, I remember you saying this to me when you were pacing me to um, a 5K PB a couple of years ago. You got very cross with me. <laughs> If you're chasing someone who is working equally as hard as you, then yes. it's like, fair, I'm going to try and keep up with you. When you've got a smug Mr. Andy Badley, <laughs> <laughs> who's just out for a gentle jog whilst you're killing yourself to try and get a 5k PB going, yeah. just come here. Just come here slightly in front of you. I didn't really want to. <laughs> yeah, you did it though. If I was honest. We, we did do it. Yeah, begrudgingly, I was like, fine. Yeah, and then Running we finished. bring you out a lot of anger happy. sometimes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I feel like anger comes out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It brings out a lot of emotions. <laughs> yeah, it brings out just about every emotion. Thanks for your questions, though. Yeah, I reckon that was amazing. So thank you very much to Rose for being our very special guest. If we could have a massive round of applause. For her. Thank you for having me. This has been the Running Channel podcast. Thank you so much to Rose. Make sure you do email in podcast at therunningchannel.com if you have any questions for future episodes. And if you could do us a small favor, oh, yeah. and if you've enjoyed this, send it to a friend. We want to help as many people as possible. So if you are enjoying, please do share the love and share the episodes. And we'll see you next time.